What's up, everyone? Good evening. We are in the house, and I think we're running. I got the chat window. Seems to be running because a bunch of you guys have been chatting me before I even jumped on here. And so let me know if uh, we have any audio or visual issues. But on my end, I believe everything is working just fine. And I can still see your chats, so that's a good thing. And uh, let me know. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see if uh, any of your, chat your chats are continuing to come through. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Solheim Vikings, i.e. Brian. <clears throat> Welcome, CG. All right, so uh, I'm going to jump right into it tonight, um, you guys, and I'm going to try to keep this stream at about 45 minutes, and I'm going to tell you why. So I got a couple of announcements before we jump into the topic of this live tonight, which is choosing uh, your, not my, your best rod for surf fishing. And the reason why I decided to uh, go that route with this live is to is because actually I get a kind of a lot of messages, kind of a little bit a lot <laughs> of messages uh, from various people, most of the people who I don't know who they are, um, asking me about what rod they should get. And so I just wanted to cover the basics because a lot of times when I'm explaining that, I think I'm assuming that the person who's messaging me understands what I'm talking about. And sometimes I can tell through the interaction that um, maybe this, some things are getting lost in translation. So the how to choose your rod portion, which is the bulk and the main point of this video, um, is really aimed at the newcomer. And it's aimed towards the person who is trying to figure out who really wants to start surf fishing and doesn't know uh, where to start in terms of choosing their rods. So I just want to uh, really do, uh, uh, you know, just a beginner's overview of um, what to look for um, in terms of choosing your first surf rod. So that's going to be happening here in just a few minutes, maybe about five minutes. Let me say hello to some of you guys in chat. And so I'm going to be doing a little bit more rambling and talking, hopefully not rambling, uh, talking tonight. And so uh, I'm going to try to catch up on the chat in between uh, my little talks. Um, CG, welcome. Ed Glass. Hey, welcome. Welcome, Ed. Thank you so much for saying hello. Derek. Hey, what's up, brother? Thank you so much. It's hot in Southern California. How hot is it over in Arizona, brother? Um, Justin, how's it going, brother? Tan Sen, I miss you, Tan. Uh, we need to get together and fish or something. I think you signed up for the buy me a coffee surf fishing meetup, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Um, Greg Sato, 96 Akuma SST, salmon steelhead medium. There you go. Chris Gonzalez, welcome to the house. NorCal fisherman in the house. Hey, welcome. Hey, Eugene. Welcome, welcome. Good to see so many familiar and some new faces or um, comments from people who I don't know very well and uh, familiar ones that are always here uh, keeping me company. And this is all about you guys and, um, you know, spending, jumping on live here. Um, it's, it's all about spending time with you guys and uh, you guys are what make it great. So thank you so much to each and every one of you taking time out of your busy evenings uh, to spend some time with little old me. So let's jump into a couple of announcements. Um, first off, uh, you'll see all of these things that I'm talking about in the description of this live chat, as well as probably in a bunch of my other videos. Um, first and foremost, buy me a coffee. It's my channel membership, and it's $3 a month or $30 for the year. It's through Buy Me a Coffee. You can find the link there in the video description. Just want to give you guys an invitation to get involved. Um, and more than anything, um, it's me uh, asking for your support if you're stoked by this channel and if this channel has helped you or has any meaning to you in any way and you want to help keep me fishing and keep helping me create content. Um, but I also try to throw in um, as many perks as I can possibly do for that membership. And so uh, first off, on next Saturday, August 20th, there's going to be a exclusive surf fishing meetup in Orange County for Buy Me a Coffee members only. It's absolutely free um, if you're a channel member on Buy Me a Coffee. And we're going to be getting together in Orange County. And if you sign up uh, anytime before then, you're more than welcome to jump on. There's no limits. And uh, just hang out. It's a chance for me to hang out with you guys. Um, hopefully help out newcomers. That's really important to me. 
and just meet some people whom I've never met and hang out with old friends as well. Right now, we got 24 people already RSVP'd for August 20th, um, next Saturday in Orange County. And um, you can uh, have access to that. And then also, um, there's uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway tonight, right after the stream. So I'm going to aiming to keep this stream at about 45 minutes. I'm going to try to close it out at 8:45, and at 9 p.m. I'm going to queue up an exclusive live stream accessible to only Buy Me a Coffee members. We're going to be giving away uh, some Lucky Crafts. Uh, thank you to Lucky Craft for um, always um, providing me with stuff to give to you guys. We're going to be giving away. Um, we have a bunch of Phoenix hats. Probably won't be giving away all of these tonight, but um, I went and picked these up today um, to give away. We got Big Lout Bates. Uh, Mr. Josh from Big Lout Bates has four, has a handful of packs of um, of some of his plastics, um, Perch Puncher Grubs that we're going to be giving away tonight at 9 p.m. I'm going to be giving away some of these jigs from Lucky Craft, and they work. I tested them. And I haven't shown that video yet. And then the grand prize tonight that we're going to be giving away is... Ah! Tonight, we're going to be giving away as the grand prize, the Phoenix Trifecta Light 904. And I'm going to be giving this bad boy away to one lucky winner. Um, that's on Buy Me a Coffee at uh, 9 p.m. tonight. And then I also have a private charter that's exclusive to Buy Me a Coffee members. Buy Me a Coffee members gets first dibs um, on September 18th. We're doing a full day off the Vendetta 2 in San Diego. And we're going to be chasing whatever wants to bite, either the Coronado Islands or um, going offshore paddy hopping. So those are three big things coming up. So if you want to, if you've been thinking about it um, and if you're interested, tonight might be a good time. And also, guys, I'm probably going to be raising the price of my channel membership from $3 to probably $5 um, uh, before the year's out. So anyone who gets in before that will be grandfathered. So um, if you guys want to get, if you guys want to jump in tonight, you guys will be eligible for the giveaway tonight, as well as everything coming, coming um, forward with that. And so... Um, throw that out there. Um, and then also, uh, some of you guys, I think a lot of you guys hopefully have already seen, uh, BD Outdoors. Um, I'm super honored to be a guest panelist on a surf fishing webinar that BD Outdoors is putting on tomorrow at 6 PM. Uh, it's absolutely free. You have to be a member of BD Outdoors site and you have to RSVP for the webinar. You can, I have links to both of those in the video description below. And, um, I, and you're hearing it here live. Um, I announced it on my Instagram and my Facebook, my personal Facebook, and um, I didn't actually, in hindsight, I didn't feel good about those posts. Why? Because I made that event all about me, and uh, you know, I was super stoked. I'm like, BD Outdoors? I'm going to be on, like, BD Outdoors asked me to be on a surf fishing webinar? Like, what the heck? And so I was just sharing that stoke, but in the process of that excitement, I made that all about me, man, and uh, it's not about me. It's about you. And so um, for the, this webinar, Surf Fishing webinar, um, I am just inviting you guys to be a part of it, um, especially for some of you that are newer to the game or wanting to learn. Uh, surf Fishing legend, SoCal Surf Fishing legend Bill Varney um, is, is another panelist, and I get to share that time with Bill, which is insane. And then you guys know Anthony Canuli from Save on Tackle. He's also going to be joining in that webinar along with two other people from BD Outdoors. So... Um, just should be a really helpful time and um, will hopefully be helpful for some of you guys that tune into that. So if you're interested in that tomorrow, 6 p.m., uh, sign up for that um, in the video description below. You have to be a, a site member as well as a uh, RSVP. And it's live, but then it's also going to be recorded and you can have access to it afterwards as well. And I think I had a question about that. And then lastly... Um, just want to put a word out there. Um, he's actually buying me a coffee member too. Chris um, is putting on an event called the SoCal Bonanza on September 17th. And this is uh, benefiting the Real Warriors Foundation and it's supporting war veterans. So all proceeds for this event go to, go to, um, go to supporting veterans. It's a surf fishing tournament um, in Huntington Beach, I believe. And he's done an amazing job of uh, getting sponsors involved. Lucky Craft, Phoenix Rods, I think Daiwa. Uh, the list is long. And so there's going to be tons and tons of prizes. Um, and I think that everyone, like almost 
like a lot of people are going to have chances to win something and it's a it's a tournament so if you guys are into that kind of thing and see how you guys stack up against the best of the best uh be sure to sign up i got a link for that i know they're looking to fill a couple more spots um so socal bonanza check that out and again i'm not getting anything uh from uh from from socal bonanza for promoting that bd outdoors just trying to share the stoke guys uh, i'm excited and i hope you guys are excited too and would love to have you guys show up and and uh just have the bkf crew to show up uh to the bd outdoors and chat and let them know that you're here uh to support me and to learn so hope you guys can be there for that and uh let me see a couple of these comments and then we're going to jump into the rod portion okay um Mr. Bob, I need to RSVP. So if you signed, so there's two different things. You need to be a member of the BD Outdoors forum. So you need to register for that. And then there's another link where you can RSVP for the event. So there's two separate things. Um, and I know that's kind of confusing. So that's why I left two separate links. And if you did one of them, didn't do the other, um, just check it out in the video description, Bob. Um, NorCal Fisherman, Akuma Guide Select Pro, medium light, nine foot. That sounds bomb. Uh, Sean, G. Loomis, anything G. Loomis, man, um, medium heavy. So I can already tell um, it might, I don't know, I'm assuming you do um, some bait and weight um, is what I'm guessing with that. And again, I'm going to be talking about that and breaking it down in terms of understanding what to look for in a surf rod or any rod for that matter. Um, I'm going backwards here. Oh my gosh, cast and reel. Hi, Tony. Tony, I miss you, brother. Um, I think that you've been traveling a lot. And, um, and I don't know how you do it, sir. And, um, it's really good to have you jump on cast and reel. Um, I didn't get to watch the video, but he, uh, cast and reel has a YouTube channel, a really, really good YouTube channel. And he's an excellent, really, really gifted teacher. Um, oh my gosh, a rod fell. Um, so check out his YouTube. He just dropped one on a white sea bass. I didn't get to watch it. I just saw it show up on my subscription list. Um, so make sure you guys check that out. Um, DY, I'm just kind of getting through here. Mark Martinez, I didn't think, I didn't think that bench. Thanks for sharing your stoke. I appreciate, I appreciate your support, Mark. And uh, those of you that, um, really support me, you guys are my oxygen. Um, you guys breathe life into what I do. And so from the bottom of my heart, um, always thank you guys so much. Um, KI, what's up, Benji? Just signed up on BMS, BMAC. Hey, thank you so much. And again, uh, no pressure. Uh, I, you know, just, just wanting to share, um, about how I want to keep fishing and providing content for you guys. Um, no pressure whatsoever. Um, whether you do or not, um, I appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, but th for those of you guys that do it, um, truly, it means a lot to me. It, it, I get goosebumps every single time I see, um, someone that signed up. So, um, thank you so much. Hey, Rolando, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for dropping in, man. Appreciate you, brother. Um, Vincent, looking to buy a Phoenix M1, 7.3 fast, 8 to 20. Wondering if you've ever used it for surf fishing. Uh, Vincent, I have not, and that could absolutely work. Um, and I think so. Um, Joe, oh my gosh, Joe's a legend, guys. Mr. Joe, it's an honor to um, have you here. And appreciate you dropping in and uh, some of the comments, you know, over the years, just dropping in. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Longcast Joe commented on my YouTube channel. Uh, he's a slayer. He's a, a white sea bass hunter and catches a whole bunch of stuff. Check out Longcast Joe on, on uh, Instagram um, and really, really good, good fishermen and supporting. All right, guys. Uh, Sean Palin, thank you so much. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Let's talk about rods, how to choose your surf rod. Again, this is for beginners, um, people who are just kind of figuring it out. Why am I making this video? Because I get a lot of messages and questions on my YouTube channel, email, Instagram, other places that I prefer not to get message from <laughs> um, that aren't necessarily public. Um, a lot of questions on rods. So I just want to be able to um, cover this real quick and um, so I'm going to try to make it maybe I don't know we'll see how long it goes hopefully super fast and then answer some questions and then we'll wrap it up for the night okay guys so rods um, for surf fishing or any kind of fishing for that matter it boils down to three things and it's it's all in your lap L-A-P all right and it's going to start with um, the first thing that you want to look for when you have no idea what kind of rod you want for the surf is to look at the line and lure rating, 
All right, so um, I'm gonna bust out here my beloved one, the only one that I have. Oh no, this is the 904. This is the 903. Uh, I'm in my garage, I'm trying not to break my tip. This is the Phoenix Trifecta Light 903. All right, now every single rod that you look at, um, and, and yeah, every single rod that you look at is gonna have that. Line is rated six to 12 pound, and the lure, oh, <laughs> my brain doesn't work backwards. Lure uh, and a lure rating. There's a line and there's a lure rating. All right, so you see on the Trifecta Light 903, it's rated six to 12 pounds. And the lure rating is rated one quarter to three quarters. All right. So then as you look at that rating, you have to ask yourself, what do you want to catch? What do you want to target? In Southern California, the, if you're just starting out, I recommend a, um, I recommend a Carolina rig um, and maybe using gulp sandworms or sand crabs just to get started. All right. So a lot of questions, a lot of questions that I get from people is, I want a rod that I can catch perch, corbina, and halibut. Now, certainly, this is a little bit of a unique rod, and you actually can do that. You guys know that I use this for throwing lucky crafts and catching halibut. Uh, I've been able to catch a 27-inch white sea bass, uh, 20, 20, 22-27-inch white sea bass, something like that, 32-inch uh, halibut with this rod, all right? And so this is a little bit of a unicorn rod, and um, I just, I just want to tell you guys, um, more than anything, uh, with your rods, guys, um, I know I'm talking about all Phoenix rods here, but, um, but uh, you know, by no means do you have to use a Phoenix rod. Um, you guys know that I'm a pro staff for Phoenix, so I bring that bias in, and, um, but by no means do I ever say you have to only use Phoenix, you know? Um, that's, that's not what I'm saying. Um, I want to help you pick the best rod for you based on your budget. Um, Phoenix is not the most expensive rod out there, and it's not the cheapest rod out there. And so um, just uh, just keep that in mind. So, you you know, if you already have a reel or you haven't bought a reel and you have a line rate, you're looking at a line rating of 6 to 12 pounds, then you want to be able to use uh, a reel that's holding line anywhere between 6 to 12. And preferably, you want to be right in the middle of that line rating. All right, so you don't want to push it too much. Um, ideally, you'll probably, for that 6 to 12 rating, you, you want to be at 8 to 10 pounds, right? Now, um, if you guys pay attention to my videos, you'll notice that I've actually been putting 15-pound leader um, on that, and it's not advised. But um, again, that, the Phoenix Trifect Light, in my opinion, is a little bit of a unicorn rod, um, and there's weaknesses with that rod too. So um, 6 to 12, so... Again, you want to use the line and the reel to match up to the rating of the rod. Does that make sense? All right. So you want to look at the line, the line and lure rating. And then the lure rating is going to tell you what that rod is ideal uh, for throwing. So if this is the trifecta light is rated to throw one quarter to three quarter ounce. So the Lucky Craft actually fits right into the middle of that, of that lure rating. You don't want to be throwing a one ounce, one and a half ounce, two ounce. You don't want to throw a cold sniper on this thing. It'll break. Um, and then also with the line rating, if you go, if you're putting 20 pound test on this thing and you set the drag, drag too tight, you're going to break the rod. Um, this rod is a performance rod. So you're going to feel um, and you're, it's going to have the sensitivity. All right. So um, you want to get a rod based on. So you have to come up with a little bit of a plan before choosing your rod. What do you want to catch and what do you want to throw? What kind of reel do you have or what kind of interest? What kind of re rod, reel are you interested in purchasing? And you've got to match those things together. So with the rod, make sure you look at the line and lure rating. And then secondly, what we're going to be looking at is the action. The Phoenix Trifecta Light is rated medium light. OK, and um, and I know and I know you guys um, all have uh, your preferences on rods and I'm stoked with it, man. Um, uh, the Akuma SST, I've heard amazing things about um, so many different things. All right. Um, and and just hang tight with me. I, I know there's a lot of questions coming in and I'm going to get to them. I just want to get through my spiel here. Oh, we're 19 minutes for the thing. So I'm, I'm going to try to finish up here pretty quickly. All right. So you next thing you want to look at is the action. 
Lure rods typically have a light, medium, medium light, medium heavy, heavy, and an extra heavy action. What does that mean? So when you look at this rod, and it has, um, or I'm sorry, not, um, yeah. So, um, we're, that's the action. Let's look at, let's talk about, um, I'm like losing my train of thought here. Um, it's, it's a fast action. The trifecta light 903 is a fast action. All right. What fast action means, all right, is it's going to bend closer to the tip. All right. A moderate or slower action, a uh, slower rod is going to bend or load closer to the middle of the rod. All right. Um, we call that more parabolic. Um, I call it like it's noodly, you know, um, typical salmon steelhead. Um, but this is a fast action and typically like bass fishing and most people prefer um, for different styles, um, especially like the lucky craft or throwing swim baits. Um, you're going to want a fast action. Why? Because it's bending closer to here and you get a little bit more sensitivity with that action. All right. Um, so you're going to be looking at that. Um, and then, and then the action, um, light, medium, medium, heavy, that refers to the power. Okay. Um, the action, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up my words here. Um, but, um, the medium, the medium heavy rating, those ratings refer to the backbone or the power of the rod, um, i.e. the lifting power of that rod. All right. And so that's why I call this a little bit of a unicorn rod. It's a medium light, but it has a way more backbone um, then maybe a medium light should. And so it handles bigger grade fish. All right. Um, and so for instance, I have a Phoenix uh, trifecta light 802, which is a light and it's rated, I think four to 10. Um, and that's a light. Um, and it's, you know, the backbone is not going to be as strong with that. All right. So those are the three things that you're looking at. Okay. So Kind of think, what kind of fishing do you want to do? I want to throw the Carolina rig, um, you know, and you're fishing up in NorCal and the surf is real heavy up there or your style of fishing is throwing heavier stuff. You know, you like to throw a high low rig and you will have, you know that you're going to be throwing two to three ounce pyramid sinkers. You don't want to do that um, with, with, with a, a rod that's rated medium light. Chances are you're going to want a line rating of something between 10 to 30 pounds, I'm guessing. Um, so you can use 20, 20 pound test comfortably in the middle of that line rating, right? And then the lure rating would probably be one to three, one to three ounces. Um, and then you can comfortably, that rod is suited to throw um, something that's two ounces or heavier or something like that. Does that make sense? And so when you use a rod, you want to match all those things up appropriately. So on this rod, the trifecta light, it's rated a quarter to three quarter. So I'm not going to go more than three quarter. And that's actually a, a weakness of the trifecta light 903 is I cannot fish this. I've done it, but I don't recommend fishing this in Northern California or the Central Coast. It's too heavy up there. You can't get away. I mean, I guess you can, but it's not recommended to throw a Carolina wig with a three quarter ounce or less. A lot of rods you can go heavier on. So sometimes, you know, the rod will be rated up to what, like three quarters. And based on how it feels and, and the tip, you can easily put on an ounce and a half and it'll throw. I would never do that with the Trifecta Light. It's a performance rod. The tip is real fragile. And so I would not put even a one ounce egg sinker on a Carolina rig with a 903. I just wouldn't do it because I'm afraid that it'll break. And it very, very much will. I won't even fish this thing with straight braid. Why? Because braid, because braid has zero stretch. And so I have 30 pound braid on most of my reels when throwing the Lucky Craft. And so that's one reason. Another reason why I don't go straight braid is if I hook a decent grade fish, that line has no, no stretch braid. And so I feel, I feel like, and this is just me, I feel like the rod could break in that situation. So those are all things that you want to look for. Um, and so if you're, in, if you're throwing the Carolina rig for Perch and Corbina, then you want to throw line that's appropriate for each of those things. And then also you want to pair this thing up. It's a real light rod. So feel the rod before you purchase it. And then you want to pair it with the rod that matches appropriately. This is a real light 
sleek. It's like a sports car. It, it's, it's a real sleek, light rod. So you don't want to put a heavy reel on it. I wouldn't recommend putting a Daiwa BG reel, which is an outstanding reel, but it's a little bit heavier. That's why I put the Daiwa Fuego on it because the Daiwa Fuego is about seven ounces, give or take. And it, it pairs a little bit better um, with this rod. Does that make sense? So let me go through some of the questions here. And I know you guys and, you know, a lot of guys here with more experience than me. And, um, and but again, I'm doing this for the newcomer, for the newcomer who is, you know, just trying to figure out what kind of rod they should buy. Um, look at those three things. You want to look at the line and lure rating. You want to look at the action. You know, is it a fast action or slower action? Um, and then you want to look at the power, right? Well, how much backbone does that does that rod have? Right. Because, for instance, um, a lot of people just tell me, oh, um, I'm getting a I'm thinking about getting a rod that's medium heavy. And that's all they say. They say it's an eight foot medium heavy. They never tell me the line rating. They never tell me the lure rating. Look at this Phoenix M1 inshore. This is the Phoenix M1 inshore. And where's the rating on this? It's a fast action. Where, where's my finger? Oh, shoot. It's over here. It's a fast action. And look at this. It's a medium light. Okay. But look at the rating. It's rated one to three, 10 to 25 pounds. Right. So people who message me and just say, hey, it's a medium light. Right. Without telling me, or probably without even knowing what the lure and line rating is. My Phoenix Trifecta Light 903 is a medium light, but it's rated for eight to fifth, or I think it's rated um, six to 12 right? And one quarter, three quarter. So it's a big, big difference. Um, so you want to look at all of those things when choosing your rod and match up your reel and line and lures accordingly. That's why fishermen who fish a lot have like 70,000 rods and reels because they want a rod and reel for every kind of situation. So if you're surf fishing in Southern California, if you're just starting out, go with the medium, medium action, or medium power, fast action, and uh, maybe get a maybe get one that's rated like uh, something rated up to about one ounce, and maybe you know six to fifteen pound test. And that is you know it, there's no rod that's going to be a good do it all rod, but if you get a rod that's a medium medium power, somewhere between eight to fifteen pound test, and you know quarter to one ounce, you can throw a Carolina rig, um, catch perch, yellowfin croaker, Corbina by casting out into structure um, on the Carolina rig. And then you could, you could, you could catch halibut with that and it'll handle it. No problem. Now, um, now what it, when it comes to feel, that's where, you know, the nicer rods, what really differentiates is the feel of that rod in your hands. And a lot of times you can really feel um, the fish biting. And that's why rods I think, in my opinion, it's better to spend a little bit more on the rod um, than the reel because a rod, as long as you don't break it, um, you're going to have it for a long, long time. Reels on, on the surf, um, they degrade over time, you know. So um, investing in a, in a good rod is not a bad idea if you love the game. And for me personally, um, the way I look at it is like a cheap rod compared to a nicer rod. The difference in sensitivity is like if you're shaking hands with someone with like um, like gardening gloves on. Um, the feel of the shaking of the hand is a little bit different compared to if you have no glove on. And a nicer rod is like shaking hands with no gloves, if that makes any sense. You can feel uh, the lure moving. You can feel what's going on in the water a lot better. And, and you know, a lot of times that split second feeling that bite, um, nicer rods will give you a little bit of a better advantage to that. All right. So um, if you're just starting out, Get an ugly stick, nothing wrong with it. It's going to do just fine. And then if you find out you love the game, then move up to nicer stuff and you'll you'll notice a big difference. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, I'm going to go back through the comments. But again, the most important thing is, guys, match. Look at the line and lure rating and look at all the three of those specs on a rod and pair it with the reel that matches up with it. All right, um, I hope that makes sense. Let me go through some of these questions. A um, lot of cool comments here, um, and I'm going to go way up here. I'm not going to address all of them. I just don't have time. Um, 
All right. Thank you for sharing, Sean. Uh, Chris Gonzalez, thank you for sharing. Um, art art genre. Daiwa West Coast is a great unicorn rod as well. I, I, I've heard good things about it, for sure. And uh, no doubt that it's a great rod. Sean, does the trifecta come in a medium heavy? The trifecta light has the 904, which is incredibly difficult to find. And I'm going to be giving one away tonight. Uh, the 904 is a medium heavy and it's rated 8 to 15. So, um, and it has its strengths and weaknesses, just like every rod, just like the, tri the 903 does. So, um, Sean, that's to answer your question. Um, Oscar Garcia, ODM Genesis 10 foot, NorCal Stripers. Yes, sir. It's a completely different ball game up there. And so, absolutely, you know, uh, SoCal Waters, um, you know, we have a little bit more forgiving conditions. Um, and it's definitely more finesse. Um, we do a lot of light line surf fishing. We kind of take trout fishing to the surf, uh, more or less. Um, but the ODM Genesis, no doubt. Yeah. You need heavier stuff, uh, for NorCal stripers. Absolutely. And that's on my bucket list. Um, is star rod a good brand? I've not heard of star star rod, Bruce. I'm sorry. Um, Bly 23, any thoughts on the Phoenix cicada? I have not fished the cicada. I've held the cicada. Um, it, it's a nice rod. It's a very, very nice rod. And it's probably a little better suited for NorCal waters. I think it can handle the stripers up there for sure. A little bit more power um, on it while still being very sleek. Um, it still has that finesse feel to it. Um, so the cicada is a very nice rod. Uh, my first impressions when I was holding it is it felt a little noodly. And I think it was still a fast action rod that I was holding but it felt a little bit noodly, which might be good for actually uh, loading up a Lucky Craft or just whipping out um, a bait, which might be a good thing. I just didn't, I mean, it was just a personal aesthetic thing for me. Um, I just felt like it was a little bit noodly, but it does shut off very, very fast. And so, you know, on a hook set, you're not going to lose anything. Um, so it's a nice rod. I'd fish it. Um, I just have, don't have it in my lineup yet. So those are my thoughts. Um, Ed Glass, do you wash down your rods and reels after every session since it's in the salt? 100%. 100%. Um, I wash it down at, at home most of the time, uh, every time. Um, I just spray it down with the hose, and you don't need to be gentle with it like with your reels. I just hose it down um, as thoroughly as, you know, not like I'm not looking at every inch, but um, I definitely do that. Um, let's see here. Ron waited almost two years to step up and get the TRL 903. Love, love, love it. <laughs> I'm glad you love it, Ron. Uh, you told me you love it. Um, I love it. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a personal thing. It's not a fact. Um, not everyone has to like the trifecta light. It's just what I enjoy using. And it wasn't built to throw Lucky Crafts. I don't think it was designed to. It, it just happens to uh, do it pretty well. And I think, I think most people can agree with that. I love my Phoenix Cato. It's perfect for what for LCs and Texas, but mine broke. Not saying that the cicada is weak, but it was probably something I did wrong. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Dominic. Um, that's that's a real bummer. And uh, um, message me. I think we can get that. Um, there's, you know, Phoenix rods have lifetime warranties. Um, even even if it's your fault, um, you know, there's a deductible, but the cicada is like, what, over $200, 250 bucks, something like that. Um, I think the deductible is probably like 100 bucks, and you can get a brand new one. Um, so let, let's talk about that. I, I would hate for you to not ever, um, you know, anyways, I'll talk to you about that. Um, hello, Nels DG. Welcome. My BG MQ is pretty light. Oh, okay. The MQ, I think that's uh, maybe a little different. Um, but yeah, like I said, I started finish fishing with the Shimano Stratic CI4, which is like seven ounces. And then the, um, Daiwa Fuego LT is kind of like a poor man's, uh, uh, Stratic, and so it weighs almost identical to that. I don't know what the BG weighs. Um, blue guy. Um, all right. Officially fishing. Hey, Luis, welcome. It's been a minute. Good to have you on, brother. Uh, Vincent, with surf fishing and using light pound braid, would you use heavier leader or keep it light on both ends? So braid, because the diameter is a lot thinner um, and the pound test, uh, generally speaking, and please correct me if I'm wrong, guys. This is um, just what I do. If I have 30 pound braid on there, then I'll use like around a 15 pound leader. 
if I have a 20 pound braid on there, I'll use like a 10 pound leader. So it's like a two to one break that I use um, in terms of uh, leader, leader to braid. Um, I think that's a general rule of thumb, but um, please correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, let's see here. Vincent, yeah, we should keep talking. Mav, six pound test. Thoughts on the Phoenix Hybrid versus Phoenix Axis? Um, I fished, uh, Victor, I fished the Phoenix Hybrid and the Phoenix Axis. And um, honestly, I don't, I don't, yeah, I, I fished them, but I don't have any, um, I wasn't able to um, notice anything different. I will say that my um, offshore adventures this year have been brutal. Wow. It just has not been working out. I, I can talk to you guys more about that later. Um, all right. Hey, Alan. Dude. Hey, so if you guys checked out my bluefin tuna fishing uh, videos at Save on Tackle, Alan was a huge... If, if you thought the video looked pretty, and I think it looked pretty, um, it was all Alan. Well, huge part of it was Alan and also my friend Chris. But Alan, uh, thank you so much for the time that you gave um, to the to that project. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, KI, yeah. For Carolina Rig, using a mono shock leader is not a bad idea um, in between the braid and the fluorocarbon. Or just use mono. Nothing wrong with it. Um, Enrique Miranda, what Lucky Craft colors do you recommend for a beginner? Um, there's popular colors that you know, I, I feel like colors grab fishermen more than the fish. Um, I have my favorites. You guys know I love the Super Glow MS MKB, which, by the way, I think they're on stock right now on Amazon. So if you look um, through um, my affiliate links, or you can just go on Amazon, I get like 25 cents every LC that someone buys through my affiliate links, just FYI. But I do get a small commission. But I think the MS MKBs are in stock right now, guys. So buy them up while you can. Once they're here, they're here and they're gone the next day, dude. So if you guys want to pick up some MS MKBs, um, they're on Amazon right now. Um, but uh, Cherry Berry, which is white with the pink bottom, good one to have. Metallic Sardine is the number one selling flash minnow color from Lucky Craft. And we're all enamored with the pink bottom. I'm enamored with the pink bottom, the blue pink sardine, all that stuff. Um, honestly, Metallic Sardine, anything bait fish pattern. Metallic Sardine. Um, the MS Anchovy are two real, real good ones. Um, and if you guys watch the next video that I'm working on, and it'll be out this weekend, I think, um, you guys will see. Um, you guys will see what I mean in terms of maybe colors are overrated. And um, you guys know I have my favorites. But um, at the end of the day, it's, in my opinion, is who's throwing it, where are they throwing it, and how are they working it. And um, if you get those things right, the color might not matter. Sometimes it does. I don't know. I don't know anything. Just my opinion. All right. Um, would you ever convert to the One Piece Trifecta Pro? Maybe. Um, I've heard great things about the Trifecta Pro. Uh, really, really great things. And so, um, you know, we'll see. There's so many rods I want to hold and fish. Mavericks, do you ever get your line catch on the hook keeper on your... Catch on the hook keeper on the... Uh, that hasn't happened to me, um, but um, I haven't thrown the M1 that much either. Yeah. Bly23, appreciate you, brother. Thanks so much for the kind words. Um, Red Pill, any thoughts on the Daiwa Saltis light inshore surf rods? I have not held it. I have not fished it, so I don't have thoughts, but I've heard good things, and I have no doubt it's a really, really good stick. And so it might be something worth checking out. Um, I think go to your shops and hold the rod that's best for you. Um, brand doesn't, you know, you guys know my preference, right? But the brand doesn't matter. Go with the one that you like. All right. Uh, it's probably too heavy for what I catch. Tom, oh, dude, Coach Caustic. So Tom, hey, oh my gosh. Thanks so much for tuning in. So Tom, I, back in the day, um, I played baseball and I actually played varsity baseball and coach Caustic was my coach, my varsity year. I was a bench warmer. <laughs> um, and, uh, I was a pitcher outfielder and, uh, baseball was my first love before fishing. I loved the game so, so much. And, uh, coach Caustic was my varsity baseball coach. And, uh, 
Um, just a lot, a lot of good memories from that. And it gets goosebumps. And Coach Caustic actually found me on YouTube and sent me an email saying, is that really you? <laughs> and it's me. So um, hope you're well, Coach. And uh, we need to catch up and maybe do some trout fishing because uh, Coach Caustic loves to um, trout fish and I think panfish. All right. Um, all right. I think I'm caught up here. Joe Ramos, love my trifecta light 1003. Yeah, and that's a solid option too. Um, Pen Fierce Reels are on sale at Tackle Warehouse right now. $55, great deal for a surf reel. All right. Um, Joe, ever thought of doing Benji Kim surf fishing seminars on the beach like Bill Varney does? Um, kind of. So there's a lot of things that I've, you know, there's so many different ideas and thoughts. That's the one that I haven't given a lot of thought to. But, um, uh, you know, there's so many different opportunities with this, um, but it's just a matter of figuring out um, what the right thing is. All right. Um, we're about 40 minutes into the live. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, if you guys have any other questions, um, those of you guys, and really, um, it's a great place to interact and throw feedback and share what works for you. Um, absolutely. 100%. Um, also, but you know, uh, the main thing of this is just you know, helping people who are trying to get their first setup. And so um, if, you know, through this video, you watch it all the way through and you have uh, questions, uh, please feel free to email me or you can message me on Instagram. And I'm more than happy to um, share with you that I know. But I know that for a beginner, those three things, the line, um, the action, the line and lure rating, the action um, and the power um, you just want to look at those three things and pair it up appropriately with what you have on your reel and what you want to throw. Um, Benji, are you going to have some PVC morale patches with your logo? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, Rolando. I'm not sure. Um, Greg, Grunion run this weekend. Electric Grunion is going to be fire. Oh, I didn't realize that the Grunion run. Um, uh, Kevin, what do you think about bait and weight in the surf? One absolutely viable, probably super relaxing, and you catch a lot of big fish. Um, it's just not my style. Um, I like moving. I maybe have ADD, you know, and I like doing the lucky craft, and you have to move for that. Bait and weight kills it 100%. I countless, countless times I've walked up to long rods on the surf in there, um, with stakes in the ground, uh, chilling on a, a beach chair. Um, and look in their cooler, and I've seen anything from 30-inch striped bass in Southern California um, to huge spot fin croaker. And these guys are chucking out, you know, three five-ounce pyramid sinkers um, and throwing out mussels and things like that. It absolutely works. Catch lots and lots of big fish. Mm -hmm. It's just not. Um, I just don't do do it. Maybe I should one day. <laughs> Um, is there a benefit to a longer rod for casting LC minus 10 and a half? And I wonder if I should be using a shorter rod. Mark, you don't 10 and a half is more than long enough for Southern California. Um, and I hear different things about, you know, the benefit of longer rods to shorter rods in theory, longer rods do help you get a little bit more distance, um, in theory, but at the same time, um, if you're using an eight foot compared to a nine foot, is it going to be a huge difference? Um, maybe, I don't know. What's more important is how does, if you're throwing a lucky craft, how is that rod loading the lucky craft? And so you want to load it and the lucky craft is a very, pretty light lure. I think it's, um, 16 grams or something like that. And, uh, 16 point something grams. And so to throw it, you really need to be able to load and you want to be able to like throw it out. Like, it's not like a lob cast when you have like a three ounce weight and you're like cannonballing it. Um, the lucky craft, you really want to load it and have that, have that rod bend back a little bit, and then you want to explode out and snap it forward. Um, and so whatever rod does that the best, um, is going to give you more distance. Um, so I'd pay attention to that more than just length of a rod. Cause say that you have a 10 and a half foot rod, but it's like a medium heavy rated to 30 pound test and two ounces. I guarantee you it's not going to throw the lucky craft very well. It just won't. Um, the lure is too light. All right. So hope that makes sense, Mark. Um, how big does a perch have to be to take home? Gilbert, there's no size limit on perch. Again, I'm not the DFG. I'm, uh, I'm not the game warden. 
So um, just take it for what it's for, with a grain of salt. But pretty confidently, there's no size limit on perch. But I do recommend uh, releasing the smaller ones. There's not going to be a lot of meat on the small ones anyways. Um, and it's part of a mixed mixed fin fish category. So yellowfin croaker, uh, corbina, perch, I believe all qualify under the general fin fish category of uh, up to 10. Um, and so um, that's that's the limit for perch. Um, but yeah, uh, in general, if you see a pregnant one, um, let her go, even if she's big, um, and then smaller ones, I mean, you're not really going to get much meat out of it anyways. So, you know, 10 inches, 10 to 12 inches should get, should have a good meal. Um, Eugene, any tips on casting the LC? I'm bad at it compared to casting a C rig. Um, you know what, Eugene, I, I think it's just what I was saying. I think, um, number one, just pairing it with the right rod and real and um again um you know i used to throw lcs on 12 pound test 10 pound test um 20 pound braid part of it was all that stuff the lighter it is the better it's gonna fly um and it's loading but eugene i know you know your stuff with rods and all that stuff so um you know it's a it, it is a little bit of a light light lure so even if there's a slight breeze in your face um it'll get knocked down a little bit you know um but i'd say if you can get like 30 yards 40 yards um, it's probably what I get. I don't think I get much more than that. Um, hey, Michael, just managed to catch a stream. Definitely agree with the statement to invest with rod first. It's going to be a main factor for casting distance, sensitivity, and ability to fight the fish. Yeah, it just, um, it's not essential, but um, a nice rod really enhances your experience. It's just, I don't, I, I can't say it any other way, you know? Um, Kevin Acevedo, where do spot fin croakers usually hang out? Um, not too far from. Um, I, I think that they show up in LA, but not too much. Generally, Spotfin Croaker um, in Orange, they're for sure in Orange County. Um, I would hunt Huntington Beach, um, just that whole area, city and state. You can find them um, all along that stretch. Um, and they come in close, dude. Um, I would take a look at them in the evening. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll come up to your feet just like Corbina. Um, but in Orange County, they run. And then, uh, you know, San Diego County. Carlsbad and down in San Diego, um, you know, the, some of those well-known beaches, Black's Beach, Torrey Pines um, will hold Spotfin Croaker. Um, you just got to walk, man, and uh, dial in where you might find them. <clears throat> um, Tikas are great rods. Yeah, dude. Um, Victor Salvador, again, uh, Vic Victor's my brother, man. Uh, we fished a lot together before I even started the channel. And... Uh, and uh, he's a Tika Pro staff, and he really represents them well. Um, and they're more budget-friendly, but still really, really good rods. So that's a really, really good option. Um, and so a lot of people have been picking up Tika, especially from uh, the California Surf Anglers on Facebook. Um, you know, a lot of them have picking up, been picking up Tikas and love it. So a uh, really, really great option. Um, paired with the Fuego... Yeah, good stuff, Peter. Thanks for your feedback on that. Hey, Jason West, welcome. Mark Martinez, harder to fit in my car. Um, let's see. Going through these. Benjamin Moreno, good evening. Welcome. Yeah, Mr. Joe, I agree. Release the Prego Perch. Yep. All right, guys. What's up? Wow. Thank you so much, guys, for all the comments. And um, Brian, I agree with you. Quarter ounce sea rig with the gold camo worm. Can't go wrong, dude. Casting structure. Yes, sir. Um, Enrique Miranda. Got lucky to catch my first legal halibut 26 inches last month and a few white sea bass. So definitely looking to buy better gear now. Congratulations, man. And I think, um, you know, unless someone took you to your spot, um, you know, if you've been, if you caught that all on your own, then that means you've been putting in the time. And uh, again, all my mentors taught me this. The mentors that, you know, that taught me, none of them gave me spots. Um, you know, they they just said um, nothing beats time on the water. And so, you know, understanding how waves break, structure, um, identifying holes, you know, all that stuff. Nothing beats time on the water, guys. So, um, unfortunately, there's you know some there's just not shortcuts. Um, just, you just gotta love the sport 
and loving the sport means you're getting out there regardless of whether you're catching or not. Um, and you have to be focused and learn every time you go out. But I promise you, if you're learning, you will get better. Um, I guarantee it. Um, <clears throat> HS era, I saw issue with fish. NorCal YouTuber post he was on tuna trip with you and got skunked. He and fellow NorCal YouTuber are nice guys. Yeah, I want so just as a little backstory for you offshore guys. I went on a day and a half off the new Loan. Um, and my friend Steve Wang from NorCal invited me, and then he's also friends with Ish. And so I was stoked. I'm like, oh my gosh, Ish, dude, he's like one of the first guys I started following on YouTube. Um, and I love his channel. I'm oh my gosh, I'm gonna fish with Ish. And we went on this day and a half, uh, hoping for tuna, and they were limiting it on yellowtail like every single day. All the boats were limiting on yellowtail. It's it was in the middle of the hot bite. Like I thought it was as close to a guaranteed uh good fishing trip um as it can get. And the new Loan is one of the fishiest boats in the San Diego fleets. Um, just look at their numbers. And they had just limited on Yellowtail the day before. And we went on a day and a half trip. And a boat full of 24 anglers caught a total of 20 fish. <laughs> uh, it was real, real tough fishing. We stopped on paddy after paddy. And I skunked. Uh, all of us, uh, me, Steve, and Ish, all skunked. And uh, it was just tough, tough fishing. And that's kind of sums up my offshore fishing trip this year. That trip was not supposed to be bad. <laughs> and it was tough and of course the next day uh the new land limited on tuna you know wide open they went live on instagram um spinning rod rebel marvin like your videos i see mmfc brothers in the house cool man welcome i don't know what mmfc is but thank you um all right we're gonna try to finish up here because i'm about to go live uh for my buy me a coffee members to do a giveaway uh we're gonna jump on live i was supposed to be at 9 p.m uh it'll probably be a little bit after that um but yeah just just gonna be doing that so again if you guys want to be eligible for a giveaway we're gonna be giving away some lucky crafts uh, i'm gonna be giving away the phoenix trifecta light 904 uh medium heavy as the grand prize we're gonna give away um some jigs uh, I'm going to give away some Phoenix hats, um, some big lout baits from my friend Josh, a bunch of other stuff. Um, and that's going to be exclusively for my Buy Me Coffee members. If you're interested in that, uh, $3 a month, $30 for the year. Um, you can check out that link in the video description. And then once you do that, I will have your information on a spreadsheet. You will be eligible for a giveaway tonight. Um, and you'll see all the info. You can access the page and see all the links for everything that I have on there. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. There's been almost like 50 to 60 of you guys hanging out with little old Benji Kim um, this whole evening. Uh, and so super humble. Thank you so much. Uh, BD Outdoors tomorrow at 6 p.m. Would love to have uh, BKF, BKF subscribers jump on there and say hello. Uh, let them know that you came uh, from... Uh, from this word of mouth. And so you can sign up for that in the video description below. Um, SoCal Bonanza fishing tournament, um, benefiting real warriors foundation, uh, which all proceeds go to veterans. Check that out. Um, in the link below, but, um, much love to you guys. Um, I haven't been surfishing very much cause of all my trips. And so we're going to go super hard, um, in August and September. And then, uh, August, September, October, November, December. Um, we're going to, I think I've only surfished like 10 times this year in SoCal surf, uh, maybe. So, uh, we're going to make up for lost time. We're going to hopefully go out for Corbina here in the next couple of days. Uh, tar go after the halibut and white sea bass too. Um, lots coming your way. I got a new video drop in, um, probably this Sunday and a lot of stuff going on guys. I want to thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. And um, let me know if you guys have any questions from the live tonight. And uh, as always, guys, tie lines. <laughs>